Hello dear students. In this video, I am going to share with you an amazing story about the transformation of a man's heart because of the kindness shown to him. The name of this story is uh, The Rat Trap. Chapter 4 from your textbook in English, class 12th, Flamingo. Selma Legaloff is the author of this story. Selma Legaloff was a Swedish writer whose stories have been translated into many languages. Universal theme runs through all her stories. A belief that the essential goodness in a human being can be awakened through uh, understanding and love. The story uh, of Selma Legaloff is set amidst the mines of Sweden, rich in iron ore, uh, which figure large in the history and legends of that country. This story is told somewhat in the manner of a fairy tale. And now let's start the story. Once upon a time, there was a man who went around selling small rat traps made of wire. He made the rat traps himself from uh, the material that he gathered by buying in the stores or at uh, big farms. But his business was not very uh, successful or profitable. Therefore, he had to take help of both begging and petty thievery. Uh, though uh, he was trying to make his earnings by two different ways, his clothes were rags and his cheeks were sunken and hunger was clearly shown in his eyes. His life seemed to be too dull and his face seemed to be uh, too sad and uh, he was lost in his own thinkings. One day, this man had fallen into a line of thought which really seemed to him entertaining. He was thinking about his rat traps. Then uh, all of a sudden, he was uh, stuck by the idea that the whole world with its uh, lands and seas, its cities and uh, villages, was nothing but a big rat trap. His mind was filled with all kinds of negative thoughts about the world and the people of the world. Uh, maybe his experiences with the people of the world were too bitter that he had uh, only uh, the negative feelings uh, about the people of the world, about the world. According to his thinking, the only purpose of the world was just to set baits uh, for people. It offered the world, it offered the riches and joys, shelter and food, heat and clothing exactly as the rat trap offered cheese and pork and as soon as anyone let himself to be tempted to touch the bait, it closed on him and then everything came to an end. These lines clearly show that the world was not very kind to him and therefore his mind was full of all kind of bad thoughts of it. Uh, he wanted to say as the rats are trapped in the rat traps. In the same way, people are trapped in the things of the world and uh, as the rats have no way out, uh, once uh, when they are trapped. In the same way, people who are trapped, they also have no way out. After uh, this, the, the red trap seller uh, started thinking of the people he knew, uh, about the people uh, who had let themselves to be caught in the dangerous uh, trap or snare and of others who are still circling around the bait. One dark evening, he was walking wearily along the road. He caught a sight of a little grey cottage by the roadside. 
he knocked uh, on the door uh, to ask shelter for the night. Surprisingly, this man was not refused. Instead of unpleasant faces which ordinarily met him, the owner of the house, uh, who was uh, an old man without wife or child, uh, he was so glad to get someone to talk to in his loneliness. The owner of the house put the porridge, uh, porridge pot on the fire and uh, gave him supper. He then cut off a big slice from his tobacco roll that it was sufficient for both the stranger's pipe and his own pipe. Then he took out an old pack of cards and played the Swedish card game with this guest until bedtime. The old man seemed to be so generous that he wanted to share his secrets uh, with this man as he shared his porridge and tobacco. He told his guest that in uh, his days of prosperity, he was a crofter at Ramsjo Iron Works and had worked on the land. And now because he was no longer able to do day labor. Uh, it was his cow which supported him. The cow gave milk for the creamery every day and uh, the last month he had received uh, all of 30 kronor in payment. Kronor is plural of krona that is Sweden's currency. The stranger or the red trap seller uh, could not believe uh, his eyes when he saw that the old man got up and went to the window, took down a leather pouch which hung on the uh, nail in the very window frame and picked out three wrinkled 10 kronor bills. The owner of the house did all this before the eyes of his guest. Uh, then uh, nodding knowingly and then stuffed them back into the pouch. Next morning, the rat trap seller and the owner of the house got up in fresh mood. The crofter was uh, in hurry uh, to milk his cow and the other man, the stranger, he, uh, he thought that he should not stay in bed when the head of the house has gotten up. Both of them uh, left the cottage at the same time. The crofter locked the door and uh, put the key in his pocket. The peddler said goodbye and thank you and then uh, each went his way. But uh, then the peddler could not resist the temptation, this stranger. This red trap seller could not resist his temptation. After half an hour, he came back and stood again before the door. He did not try to get into the house. He only went up to the window pane. Uh, he went up to the window and broke a pane, uh, stuck, his, uh, stuck in his hand and got hold uh, of the pouch with 30 kronor, with the 30 kronor. Uh, bills. He took the money and stuffed it into his own pocket. Then he hung the leather pouch uh, back in its place and went away. Uh, as he walked along with the money, he felt pleased with his smart, uh, smartness. He thought that how smartly he completed the task, the task of stealing. Since uh, he had stolen the money, he did not want to continue walking on the public highway. Instead of going to the public highway, he entered into the woods. So, uh, and uh, as uh, he was walking, in the beginning, uh, he was at ease. He was comfortable. But later, it started becoming worse. The forest where he was walking was... Uh, uh, so big and a very confusing forest. The paths in the forest were twisted and very difficult. He walked and walked without coming to uh, the end of the wood and finally 
he realized that he was uh, only walking around in the same part of the forest. Then all of a sudden, uh, once again, he was engulfed, surrounded with all kinds of negative thoughts about the world and the rat uh, trap. Earlier, he was thinking about the people who were trapped and uh, the, about the people who were still circling around the bait. And now his own turn had come. He thought like that. And now he began to think that he himself was tempted to steal. Now he began to think that he himself was tempted to steal uh, the leather pouch that was like a bait for him. And he was caught. He began to, uh, to think that the whole forest with its trunks and branches, its thickets and fallen logs, closed in upon him like an impenetrable prison from which he could never escape. It was uh, late in December. The forest was covered with darkness and this increased the danger. Uh, he was in gloom and hopelessness. He felt extremely disappointed. And uh, finally, he saw that there was no way out. He sank down on the ground, extremely tired, tired to death. He started thinking that his last moment had come. But then suddenly he heard a sound of regular thumping. The moment he heard this uh, thumping sound, he became hopeful and courageous. Uh, he thought to himself, there must be people nearby. And because of that, he gathered all his strength, uh, got up and walked unsteadily in the direction of the sound. Uh, the Ramsjo ironworks are now closed down, but not so long ago, it was a large plant with smelter, rolling mill and forge. Uh, in the summer uh, time, long lines of heavily loaded barges and scows slid down the canal, which led a large inland lake, and in the winter time, the roads near the mill were black from all the coal and uh, coal dust, uh, which sifted down from the big charcoal uh, crates. Uh, during one of the long, dark evenings, just before Christmas, the master uh, smith, the master smith and his helper sat in the dark forge near the furnace. They were waiting for the pig iron to be ready to put on the anvil. Uh, all the time, uh, there were many sounds to be heard in the forge. Uh, it was possibly because of uh, the, the sound, the noise. The blacksmith did not notice the man uh, who entered the for forge, uh, opening the gate. The blacksmith glanced only uh, casually at the intruder. Who is the intruder here? This stranger, the peddler. He looked the way people of this type usually did. Uh, he was uh, with a long beard. He looked dirty and ragged. Uh, he had a bunch of rat traps hanging on his chest. He asked permission to uh, stay and the master blacksmith nodded arrogant consent without honoring him with a single word. Uh, the owner of the Ramsjo Iron Mill was a prominent iron master. Let's listen to this very attentively. At this moment, the iron master, the owner of the Ramsjo Iron Works, came into the forge on one of his nightly rounds of inspection. When the iron master saw this stranger, he walked close to him, uh, looked him over very carefully, and then tried to have a better view of his face. And then all of a sudden, in his excitement, he spoke. But of course, it is you, uh, Nils Olof. How do you look? 
uh, actually the iron master thought that this person this peddler was his old acquaintance his old friend the stranger had never seen uh, the owner this iron master before and he did not even know what his name was but he thought that if uh, the gentleman thought he was an old acquaintance he might perhaps throw him a couple of money very important point he thought that uh, he would get some uh, money from him therefore he wanted to hide his identity all at once the iron master continued he said you should not have resigned from the regiment that was a mistake uh, then he continued if i uh, uh, only had still been in the service uh, at that time it would never have happened um, why the iron master was saying all these things because he was thinking that this stranger was his old friend in the regiment and then after this the iron master offered him to take him to his house important point of the story but the stranger did not like uh, the idea because he thought that if he goes along with him his identity would be revealed and they would know that he had told a lie so that was the reason that he wanted to refuse so he refused to go with the iron master the stranger thought that going to the house of the iron master uh, would be like uh, throwing himself knowingly voluntarily into the lion's den so he refused to go this is the reason but the iron master thought differently he thought that the stranger felt embarrassed because of his miserable clothing the iron master tried to convince him saying uh, elizabeth his wife was dead his boys were abroad and uh, his uh, eldest daughter uh, and he himself they were the only people living in the house of the iron master and he said that uh, they were waiting for someone to accompany them for christmas so uh, that was an offer from the iron master to the stranger to this peddler to celebrate christmas with them but the stranger seemed to be adamant not to go to his house the house of iron master the iron master was not able to convince him so he went back to his house and he requested his daughter a very important person of the story the daughter his daughter to convince this stranger to bring him to uh, to their house the father knew that his daughter uh, had better powers of persuasion than he himself so the daughter obeying her father went to the forge to convince this man the stranger had stretched himself Uh, out on the floor uh, and lay with a piece of pig iron under his head and his head pulled down over his uh, eyes uh, as soon as the young girl caught sight of him she went up and lifted his head the man was sleeping with one eye open that means the other eye was closed that means he was sleeping with alertness he was too alert because he stole something and uh, he jumped up abruptly and seemed to be qu quite frightened the, the daughter of the iron master introduced herself to this man she said my name is edla wilmenson remember this name edla wilmenson uh my father came she said my father came home and said that uh, that uh, you wanted to sleep here in the forest tonight and then um, i asked permission uh, to uh, come and bring you home uh, to us uh, i'm sorry uh, captain that you are having such a hard time so she said these words to this man as she was looking at uh, this man compassionately 
she noticed that this man was afraid. Uh, she thought she realized that either he has stolen something or else he has escaped from jail. She thought like that. She requested the man to stay with them over Christmas Eve. Uh, she spoke these words in a very friendly manner that the red trap peddler uh, must have felt confidence in her. This lady had really a great power of persuasion that this man could not refuse. Uh, he said, uh, I will come at once. But uh, while he was riding up to the house of the Iron Master, he had uh, evil uh, predictions, evil thoughts. Uh, he began to think of his decision. He began to uh, curse himself for stealing the money of the old crafter, that old man. And he imagined himself to be sitting in the trap while he was uh, riding to the house of the Iron Master. He thought that he would never come out of that trap. Next day was the Christmas Eve and when the Iron Master entered into the room for breakfast, he seems to be happy and satisfied because he thought that he had met his old regimental comrade so unexpectedly. Uh, he said to his daughter, uh, first of all, we must see to it that he gets little flesh on his bones. Uh, he gets little healthier. And then he, he said to his daughter that we shall also see that he should not run around uh, the country selling the red traps. Meaning, uh, we should find some uh, other respectable job for uh, this man, for uh, the person that he thought that he was his old regimental friend. The daughter said to the father that it seems that uh, bad things happened with him. She said to her father, uh, last night I did not think uh, there was anything about him to show that uh, this man had once been an, an educated man. She wanted to say that uh, it was very hard to believe that once this man, the stranger, was an educated man. Uh, the father told the daughter to have patience because he thought that he would see something different. Uh, he was not prepared for what he was going to see. Just as the father said this, the door opened and the stranger entered. He was looking completely different. He was truly clean and well dressed. Uh, he had a bath and a valet cut his hair and shaved him. Uh, he was wearing the suit which belonged to the Iron Master. Also, he was wearing a white shirt and a starched collar and whole shoes. The Iron Master's guest was looking so well groomed, but the Iron Master did not seem to be happy. He began to look at uh, this stranger with a wrinkled brow. Uh, now he realized that he had seen the stranger in the uh, uncertain reflection from the furnace and therefore he made a mistake and now uh, he stood in the broad daylight. Uh, it was impossible to mistake him for an old acquaintance. Uh, the Iron Master knew that the stranger uh, was not his old friend, his old acquaintance. It was simply he could not recognize the face of that man in the night time. The Iron Master uh, th uh, thundered. He got extremely angry. What does it mean? The stranger did not try to conceal or hide his identity. Uh, the stranger said, it is not my fault, sir. Uh, he said, I never pretended to be uh, anything but a poor trader and I, and I pleaded and begged to be allowed to stay in the forge. Uh, he requested the Iron Master to
to let him go uh, uh, taking his old ranks but uh, the iron master wanted to put the entire blame of the situation on the red crab seller uh, also he uh, threatened him to call the sheriff the stranger was extremely afraid and uh, when he heard this uh, he said now i am going to tell you mr iron master how things are and then he continued the stranger continued this whole world is nothing but a big red trap all the good things that are offered to you are nothing but cheese rinds and bits of pork set out to drag a poor fellow into trouble and if the sheriff comes now and locks me up for this then you mr iron master must remember that a day may come when you yourself may want to get a big piece of pork and then you will get caught in the trap on hearing this the iron master began to laugh iron master decided not to call the sheriff but he ordered the stranger to leave his house as fast as he could uh, then the uh, the stranger as the stranger was about to leave the house of the iron master edla will mention the daughter of the iron master intervened she said i think he ought to stay with us today i don't want him to go and she closed the door so that the men did not leave the house uh, the father got angry on the daughter but the daughter was feeling too bad for this stranger uh, in that uh, morning she was so happy and we know the reason that why she was so happy she thought how home like and christmasy she was going to make things for the poor hungry men she truly wanted the men not to go and therefore she interceded for him meaning she stood in the gap between this stranger and her father to intercede for him she started persuading her father not to send him out of the house she said he walks and walks the whole year and there is not a single place in the whole country where he is welcome or can feel at home whenever he turns he is chased away so she intercedes for him uh, he is uh, she continued he is always afraid of uh, uh, being arrested and cross examined Uh, she began to persuade her father to let him stay with them so that uh, he can find a peaceful day uh, with them with this family at least just one day in the whole year uh, the iron master said something in his uh, inaudible voice in anger but uh, he could not oppose to his oppose his uh, daughter she really had the special powers of persuasion and uh, she was uh, successfully able to persuade her father she she got success in that uh, she was a lady full of compassion she had a heart of mercy and kindness and therefore she wanted to give shelter to this man she knew that the man was a stranger but still she wanted uh, this man to get some joy and a peaceful day uh, when edla wilmenson saw that her father had given in she said to the stranger now sit down and eat the stranger uh, did not say a single word he simply obeyed what the girl said and he started eating uh he was extremely confused that why the girl gave him such respect the christmas eve passed but the stranger did not create any trouble because he did nothing but sleep he slept only 
uh, we saw that before coming uh, to this house, this uh, stranger was extremely restless and afraid and therefore he was not able to have a peaceful sleep. But since he was feeling safe in this house, he slept peacefully for a very long time. Uh, the whole forenoon he remained in the guest room and uh, slept at one stretch. Uh, at noon they woke, woke him up so that uh, he could have some uh, his, his share of uh, the good Christmas fare. But after that he slept again. Why? Because he was extremely tired. Uh, it seemed that for many years he was not able to sleep as quietly and safely as here at Ramsjo. Uh, when in the evening the father and the daughter lighted the Christmas tree, they woke him up again and he stood for some time in the drawing room blinking as the candlelight hurt him. Uh, after that, uh, he and after this, uh, he disappeared again and slept. After two hours, once more, he got up and went down into the dining room and ate the Christmas fish and porridge. And when they got up from the table, the stranger went around to each one present in the room and with the heart of gratitude, uh, he said, thank you and good night. Edla Wilmanson requested uh, this man to have uh, the suit that he was wearing as a Christmas gift, as a Christmas present. She requested this man not to return that suit to her father. She added if he wanted to spend next Christmas Eve uh, in a place where he could uh, rest in peace and be sure that no evil would come upon him, he would be welcomed back again. Uh, the stranger became speechless and confused and uh, he could not answer anything to this. Uh, he only uh, stared at uh, this young girl in surprise. Next morning was the Christmas service. And then uh, the father and the daughter had to get ready to go to the church for the early Christmas uh, service. The stranger was still sleeping and therefore they decided not to disturb him. Uh, but when uh, they went to the church, they came to know a very important point of the story. They came to know uh, about the news that the crofter had been robbed by a man who went around selling rat traps. All of a sudden, they were sure that the thief was none other than the man who was the guest in their house. Both of them became extremely worried, anxious. They were so tensed because, uh, why they were tensed? Because they thought that the man who was taking rest in the house, that was the man who did that, stealing. In the wagon, the father started getting angry on the daughter and also he started blaming her for sheltering the stranger. Uh, he thought that uh, the men must have taken away the expensive articles of the house, including the silver spoons left in the cupboard. Uh, then the wagon had hardly stopped at the front steps when the ironmaster asked uh, the valet whether the stranger was still there. The ironmaster uh, added that uh, he had heard at the church that the man was a thief. Then the valet replied that uh, the stranger had gone and did not take anything with him. Uh, but on the contrary, uh, he had left behind a little package for Miss Wilmenson as a Christmas gift or Christmas present. 
Excitedly, Edla Wilmenson opened the package. Uh, it was so badly packed uh, that the things inside the package came uh, into view all at once. The moment she saw the things inside the package, she gave a cry of joy. She got extremely happy. Inside the package, she found a small red trap and in it lay three wrinkled uh, 10 chrono notes. With this red trap, there was a letter also for her. And the letter goes uh, like this. I'll read this, uh, this letter for you. Honored and noble miss, since you have been so nice to me all day long, as if I was a captain, I want to be nice to you in return as if I was a real captain. For I do not want you to be embarrassed at this Christmas season by a thief. But you can give back the money to the old man on the roadside who has the money pouch uh, hanging on the window frame as a bait for poor wanderers. The rat trap is a Christmas present from a rat who would have been caught in the world's rat trap if he had not been raised to captain because in that way he got power to clear himself. Written with friendship and high regard, Captain Von Stell. He signed the letter as Captain Von Stell. But actually he was not uh, the Captain Von Stell. Then why he signed as Captain Von Stell? What's the reason behind this? Because... It was, this is very important, please listen to this very carefully. Because it was in the identity of Captain Von Stell that he got an opportunity to transform his heart. His entire life was changed. He signed like this to show his gratitude to Edla Wilmenson. He wanted to thank her uh, for the honor that she gave him as a real uh, captain. Uh, he called himself a rat who would have been caught in the world's rat, uh, rat trap uh, if he had not been raised to captain because in that way he got power to clear himself. Such a beautiful story of a heart's transformation. I hope that you have enjoyed this very beautiful story. Kindly watch this video at least twice. And also please like, subscribe and share. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care.